Khabarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very interesting things happening around the world today. And by the way, we have not forgotten the broadcast we promised you looking into Antarctica. I'll be coming out with that just a little bit later after this important broadcast to bring you up to speed on some breaking news that is happening now. Uh, the U.S. has deployed drones in South Korea capable of striking North Korean targets. Uh, this is something being brought out uh, this morning by uh, RT News and clearly something that uh, lets us know that the situation in uh, South Korea, in Japan, is definitely escalating more and more. Whether or not the U.S. and Japan will actually launch a first strike against North Korea still remains to be seen. However, I do believe this is something that we are going to see happen in the very near future. Uh, that still may be months away, much like it was with Iraq uh, under President Bush. Uh, he said he was going to strike. He did strike, but there was still planning that went on. And of course, North Korea, a little bit different than that of uh, Iraq. Iraq did not have any weapons of mass destruction. North Korea clearly having a nuclear arsenal already building up. And as well, they have satellites in orbit that some claim that there are actually nuclear weapons on board. Uh, moving into other news as well, Reuters is reporting that Japan plans to send the largest war uh, warship that they have to the South China Sea with exercises with the United States uh, and also into the Indian Ocean to do joint exercises with the U.S. and the Indian government there. This aircraft carrier is a helicopter aircraft carrier and of course there is still major tensions between uh, Japan and that of China over the disputed uh, uh, South China Sea there that is going on between these two here. So no doubt it will continue to raise tensions and while uh, there is tensions even with President uh, Trump and that of President Xi of China, this also seems to give uh, Japan a good opportunity to actually be able to tread into their waters, feeling a bit more secure with the U.S. Uh, at their back. Article that we saw that came out that my wife sent to me uh, from Yahoo News is Russia threatening NATO in the North Atlantic region. This article was very surprising to me. I was expecting to see that uh, another provocateur type of article coming out accusing Russia of, of being um, another aggressive posture. But this article uh, clearly shows just the opposite. We find out in here, it says a report calling NATO to increase its presence in the North Atlantic Ocean in response to Russia's growing military strength was slammed by an expert Saturday. Nikolai uh, Toponin, an associate professor of European law at uh, the Russian Foreign Ministry Moscow State Institute of International Relations told Radio Sputnik that the claims were a baseless attempt to spread fear in the region. Last week, the report published by the London-based Royal United Services Institute think tank urged NATO to reinforce its naval activity in the region over threats from the Russian Navy, especially the Northern Fleet. Uh, Topornin raised doubts over the report of, uh, authored by former NATO commanders James Stavridis and Philip Bredlove. As we know, Bredlove, clearly uh, a, a general there that was over the European command, has always wanted a war with Russia. In fact, here in 2014, really pressed uh, then President Obama to go to a war with Russia, that that was their opportunity. But anyway, he says, all work is paid for, and this report is no exception. How objective it is and competency of the person who prepared it is another issue. It's one thing if he has tried to give an objective picture. But if he wanted to spread some fear and think up some stories, that's quite another. And it seems to me that uh, that in this case, it's more likely the second one, Torpenin said, according to Sputnik News that released that information there. But nonetheless, if we look at whether or not Russia is uh, instigating anything, there is something major going on in the United States. I wanted to share with you here, uh, Lorenzo on his channel here already happened on his Twitter page plus his own website. He's an independent uh, investigative journalist there. Shared these images here today with us on Twitter and it is an alarming uh, video to watch there. It was clearly taken by a small drone. Uh, military very much aware of what they're doing here. But this is military equipment in the United States headed to the East Coast and probably in some cases much of it has already arrived on the East Coast there. Um, from what I gather and some of the information that Lorenzo has shared on his own uh, 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 
uh, site, his website there on alreadyhappen.com there, that these, this particular military equipment, that this video was uh, actually filmed around March the 9th. Uh, you can see the tanks here on the rail cars already loaded up, ready for dispatch. But why so much military equipment being shipped to the East Coast? Uh, Lorenzo says in his own opinion that he feels like that uh, the United States is preparing for an invasion. But what kind of invasion would the United States be expecting on mainland USA? Now we know that Russia has said before, President Putin has clearly said that the next war is not going to be fought on his doorsteps, it'll be fought elsewhere. Uh, so is there a possibility of Russia and China doing an invasion on the United States? Or is this something else? Is this something more along the lines of uh, dealing with martial law in the United States because something collapsing in the U.S.? Clearly, the U.S. is sending a tremendous amount of equipment to the East Coast. And by the way, the East Coast is not the normal dispatch place for overseas equipment movement either. That would be Texas, uh, Louisiana, other places such as that. Now, just let me show you another a couple of other videos here that he's sharing uh, here with us on here. And uh, that's also like for this, <coughs> this <coughs> excuse me, this one here. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and this is probably from the group of equipment we saw on the ground already, but clearly you can see this. This is in Louisiana, and I kind of recognize the bridge once I saw it near Highway 90, uh, headed east again, just a massive amount of military equipment, armored vehicles, uh, tanks, you name it, all headed in the eastern direction of the United States there. <clears throat> but it, like I said, it's just really troubling. What is all this about? Uh, and of course, this one here says, meanwhile, in the Western Pacific, this is back to the article there that we shared with you to start with there, uh, the accusations that Russia is actually causing uh, some problems over there in the uh, Pacific region there. Um, but again, that is also a question, is it really so or is it not? Uh, something to think about, though, as we see these things happening, Russia is also, their military has deployed over in Crimea, the latest technology and the most advanced, uh, more, most powerful electronic warfare system ever was deployed into Crimea. Russia definitely not playing games here. Uh, it seems that Russia also is anticipating um, <clears throat> something major of their own and to be putting together this type of uh, jamming gear uh, inside of Crimea. So the question is, are we going to end up in the, in the middle of a war here in Europe? Is it going to start here? Is it going to spread? Is it going to get worse? You know, I, I don't know the answer to these things, friends. I wished I did. Um, sometimes I cannot help but think, you know, of the possibility that this is going to be something much greater than just a war uh, uh, of the nations. Could it be? that all this threat of war here on earth is only to justify a major military buildup of every nation of the earth for another type of invasion, an invasion from something from beyond this world. And I know some people might think, well, wow, Steve, that's just a little bit bizarre to be in saying something like that. But there are so many visions of people that have happened here in modern days that speak about uh, not being so much of a fear of a war of this kind here, but that of an alien invasion there. Uh, because we see clearly the entire world is building up their military capabilities like never before. Um, and justifying it, threat of this, threat of that, threat, whatever the case may be. Uh, I, I just don't know the answer to these things, friends, but uh, I'm sure what I'm going to share with you on our next broadcast here in just a few moments is going to shock you without a doubt either. Also, real quick here, just to share this with you as well, Scotland's leader, according to Sputnik News, and it just broke a few minutes ago, uh, is seeking authority from, from new, for, for a new independence vote. They have actually reached out to the United Kingdom, and it looks like that Scotland wants to go on their own, separating so much call for independence around the world, the people trying to gain their own independence. Can't say as I blame them, but don't know how that's going to go over too well with the UK. I'm Stephen Badoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and blessings to you.